Webheads, I promised you that I was going to be covering King in Black, and I'm here to deliver that promise. Hey, all my webheads out there, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, I am your host, Mike Spider Slayer, always helping you make decisions on what comic books to buy. And today, guys, I'm kicking off a brand new series. This is called After the Arrival, Week One, and this is a King in Black special. Yes, I did promise all of you that I would be covering the King in Black main event, and now I'm also going to be covering the tie ins, and I'm going to be as positive as I can can when it comes to books that may not be so great. I'm going to find the positivity in some of these books. Now, this series was designed for you guys in case you guys just wanted to talk about it or you couldn't afford all these tie-ins or you were just kind of on the fence about everything when it comes to King and Black and Null himself. So let's kick this one off, shall we? So the ones that we're going to be talking about today is King and Black issue one, which is the main event. This is the book that you're going to want to read if you want to follow the King in Black event. The next one we wind up having is Atlantis Attacks. This is issue five. And then we also have the Union issue one. And I heard a lot of negativity uh, even before this book was released that this was not good. So I did read it and I, I made a judgment for myself here. So let's kick off this new series shall we let's talk about the main book first and then we'll talk about these tie-ins if they're actually worth your hard-earned cash so king of black issue one obviously written by donny cates and ryan stegman does the artwork now ryan stegman has done the artwork in venom for a very long time and uh when it comes to this venom series and it has been great so when it comes to this particular issue it's nothing short but stellar everything about it is absolutely beautiful when you even look at the colors in this book the greediness of this book it looks great right from the opening pages you get a two-page spread of venom himself swinging swinging through the city and you're just like all right here we go this is the build-up this is what we've been waiting for since issue one okay so everything about this book looks gorgeous anywhere from venom to null to the avengers to the symbiotic dragons the explosions just everything about it this is something that you would expect from uh, a cinematic movie it has that type of of experience when you're actually reading this comic book all right so now let's dive into the story. So I just wanted to let you guys know that there are going to be spoilers when it comes to this special because we're going to discuss the things that happened in this book, okay? So when it comes to the story, we wind up seeing Eddie Brock. He's just basically saying, you know what? It's time. It is time to get started. There is no more hiding. There is no more uh, running from Null. And right from the get-go, this book starts out kind of emotional because this is Eddie dealing with his son and he might not see his son ever again and he feels bad that he actually has to wake up his son and and put him in this fight he feels like that he deserves a better life so right away he's going to wake him up the avengers are in place for this plan they have this grand scheme to stop all these uh null and his dragons and everything and and in this issue you feel like the avengers are a little bit overconfident okay so as our symbiotic dragons make their way towards earth uh they use all these uh bombs these like kree scroll ships as bombs to destroy the dragons and let's just say that our avengers were successful here they, it was actually pretty cool to see this but as the reader it's kind of predictable at this point where you're like yeah if it ended just this way you know the book would this event would be quite over but nevertheless it shows the overconfidence of the avengers and i really like that so we wind up seeing that explosion happen and Eddie's like, uh, you know, he realized that he feels everything that's going on in, in, uh, in the symbiote's mind. And he's like, oh man, there's only like a hundred of these dragons that are killed. 
this plan did not work at all. And when you go to the next page after that, you wind up seeing an overabundance of the symbiotic dragons getting ready to destroy Earth. And when you see that, you're like, oh my God, this is the end of the world. This is a grand scale, right, of destruction and chaos. We wind up seeing Eddie Brock who goes to Dylan and he says goodbye for possibly the last time. He puts him in a safe room uh, that Spider-Man gave him and I think it could be the same safe room that Silk stayed in all those years when she was a little girl uh, growing up. So I think it was that same safe room and you know Dylan didn't want to go but this was for his own protection. Okay, so as the issue goes along, we get to kind of see, you know, our Earth's Mightiest trying to do their best to try to stop Null. They have a plan B that's in place. We also see the X-Men get involved in the whole fight as well. And seeing the X-Men drawn by Ryan Stegman was absolutely gorgeous. Also, so, so cool. Wolverine looked great. And we get to see them doing this great fight. We see Venom also trying to attach himself to the hive mind so he could take over Noel's dragons. I don't know if it's it worked too well, but I, I think it, it just kind of backfired on him. And they finally, finally get to see the arrival of Noel. And they realize that this, this creature has been around for a very long time because his battle started with the Celestials. And we get to see the Celestials, they were taken over by Null, and all of our heroes are shocked at this. And for the first time, we wind up getting to see Null on Earth coming out of the Celestial. And his dialogue in this book is brilliant. Uh, it's just like he, he talks like a god. He's confident he feels that there's nothing that can stop him and the first thing he says is i'm going to kill your world in the meantime i am looking for a human named brock so bring him to me and this can be as painless and as quick as i am capable that is all <laughs> and you're just like oh man this guy just means business but our avengers they still seem confident they're like yeah we have plan b in place and i'm kind of thinking i'm like who is this who is the person that can try that can even come close to possibly stopping this god right and so captain america says all right let's engage and they send them in and the next thing you wind up seeing it's century and you're like oh shit if there's anybody that can beat this creature it's gonna be century right and he tore carnage apart like it was nothing so in comes century he comes flying through destroys Noel's um celestial and he takes him up into the sky and you're just like oh man here we go but Sentry was a little bit too overconfident, too cocky, and Null just rips him apart like it's nothing, absolutely nothing. And the void was released and it went into Null himself. And Null's like, is that the best you have? And you're just like, oh my God, what are our heroes going to do at this point? So Null all of a sudden takes the symbiotic, um, creatures and blacks out the sun and makes it his own planet he creates his own throne storm is trying to help out by you know providing some light it's just all a complete failure we wind up seeing that eddie confronts null right and he sits there and says i am looking for brock but you are not the right one and Eddie is like, no, not him. Don't take him. It's me that you want. And at the very end of this issue, you wind up seeing Noel stripping him from the Venom symbiote. And it, it he absorbs it like he does with all the symbiotic creatures and just releases Eddie. And Eddie is falling to the ground, helplessness. And that's how the first chapter ends. And you're just like, oh my gosh. So after reading this first issue of King in Black, did this first issue live up to the hype? Absolutely this did. There was a huge buildup to this character. We've been waiting for him for such a long time. 
and this delivered this was like an opening act to a movie you basically got to see the big bad villain you got to see how strong how confident he is and our avengers eddie century had nothing on this character so now they have to find out and go to a plan c plan d and do whatever it takes to try to stop this creature from destroying the earth how they get to that point that's still yet to be determined can Donnie cates deliver a solid event all the way through i think if anything this issue definitely delivers and it gets people excited to read issue two because it had all the makings of a movie now at the end of this particular issue you wind up seeing a graph that gives you the history of null just in case you have not followed him in the venom series or don't know anything about the character so it kind of gets you on board of everything that's going on it goes from anywhere from the necro sword to the dragons to everything that's happened up until this exact moment in time when it comes to our character i think this was an excellent read and i gotta give this particular book five stars this lived up to the hype so that is king in black issue one now let's talk about the couple of tie-ins now i won't go in as depth when it comes to these tie-ins but i can honestly say that if you're looking to um if you need if you let, let's just say that it, when it comes to these tie-ins you don't need to read it to understand what's going on in this event this is just to enhance your experience so a lot of you that just sit there and say well marvel's milking you for your money you don't have to read this, okay? Because both of these issues were very loosely tied. They were more setups uh, to their story than anything else. So let's talk about Atlantis Attacks. Atlantis Attacks was my least favorite out of these three issues. This was a book where if I sat there and said, if I was not going to cover this event, I would not buy this. This barely, like I think, does not even cover anything that has to do with king and black until the very last page of this and this has to do with amadeus cho and uh a lot of the other characters that i don't even read about it wasn't even a, like a good jumping on point uh, but it had to do with these cast of characters where hulk wound up getting possessed by this device and he was destroying the city and he wound up getting released um from this device but in the process he created a tsunami they had to stop this tsunami silk is in this i think sword master uh namor's in this and whatnot it was just this battle between these two armies or whatnot and by the end of the day it was kind of like all a test to see if like emadeus cho was worthy to stop the threat of what's going to come which is obviously null and the only time you ever see that is in the very very last page of this so this was more of a setup than anything else this is something that obviously i'm going to read just for the event going forward but i would not recommend this to you guys to pick this one up it's just it's nothing there that was really worth your money if you're looking for a king in black experience but this if you still haven't bought your comics, it's definitely not worth it here. All right. So next, let's talk about The Union. So The Union issue one is a book that I heard a lot of negativity about before the get-go because I guess people read it in advance or, or whatnot. And it's about Britain's newest heroes, okay? And one of them consists of Union Jack, who's a character that's been around for a while, okay? And then there's an, a bunch of new characters in here um, called Britannia, Snakes, The Choir, and Kelpie, okay? And they're kind of like doing this reality sports show where they're playing like capture the flag and there's people voting on their team name and all kinds of stuff like that the art wasn't actually bad in this book it was actually kind of cool i like the colors i like the way the characters looked um and some of the characters they got into a little bit descriptive on what they're like but you didn't get into too much detail when it came to them um 
The reality show part of it was kind of lame. I, I did not like that aspect so much, but I did get to learn a little bit about the characters, which I thought was kind of cool. And this new character by the name of Britannia, I think that's how you say her name. She's kind of like a Wonder Woman knockoff, but I still thought she was kind of cool. She's powerful. She's got this shield. She's got this spear. She wears this cape, but she, again, she was kind of cool, and her and Union Jack have this kind of history. Um, I would like to them for them to explore that relationship a little bit more, uh, but they kind of really didn't. All they really focused on for most of the issue was about, you know, their brand being trademarked and what team name they're going to be going to in this battle and and you know on, on reality tv but again you got to see some of their powers like you get to see kelpie's like uh, power how she can like manipulate water and stuff like that and uh you, you you heard about snakes a little bit looks like he's the grunt or the brute of the character and by the time you wind up getting to the end of this particular issue uh you wind up seeing one of the symbiote dragons making its way towards this part of earth and it's only one of them at this point and we wind up seeing this really cool battle between britannia and the dragon and it, she does battle against this creature she defeats it but in the process of defeating it she gets stabbed right through the heart and it looks like she's dead and you're just like oh dang right and so that's basically how the issue ends and it looks like that union jack takes her sword and uh looks like he's might be the ruler of this this group at least for right now and when the symbiote, symbiotic dragon died, it wound up possessing the symbiote goo, wound up possessing some of the other soldiers uh, to go after the team here. So at the end of the day, this book wasn't all that bad. Was it that great either? No, but it did enough for me to kind of go, you know what? I'm kind of interested in the union. I want to see where this adventure takes them and how uh king and black really does tie into this and how they have to you know defend the uk i thought that was kind of cool i would love to see if we get to see the exploration of these characters a little bit more when it comes to snakes and kelpie and the choir uh the choir was pretty cool she's kind of like a black canary uh where she sonic screams or whatnot but it was okay it wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be artwork was good story was okay and so at the end of the day i'm going to give this one like three stars it was it was an adequate comic book atlanta's attacks for me was like a one star book i just i would not recommend it it just really didn't have anything to do with king and black it continues in namor and uh you're gonna feel lost when you read it you're just like oh what's going on in this because this continues off of a, a story previously of what happened so if you didn't read atlanta's attacks previous you're gonna be like what am i just got myself into so yes at the end of the day of course king and black was superb it was nothing less but stellar the union was average and Atlantis attacks was great so i'm so looking forward to seeing what happens next in the king and black don't know what's going to happen to Eddie. What's going to happen to Dylan? You know, I love how this incorporates the the Marvel universe. I love how the Avengers were um, were actually involved in this comic book right from the start, and uh, it makes it feel like a grand Marvel event. And that's when I think you will have an event that you like, uncompared to like empire or some of the other events that we've had in the past so guys i want to know in the comments below what did you think about king and black the union and atlantis attacks if you read it are you on board with these tie-ins are you just going to read the main event give me all those thoughts below hopefully you enjoyed this special i'm going to be bringing it to you each and every week and uh and we're going to talk about it. So until next time, guys, this is Mike Spider-Slayer signing off. I'll leave you more content right here, and I'll see you in that next video. Take care, guys. Bye.